in the dialogue between psychology and theology, we're really looking at the same human condition. And we're trying to say, what is it that moves this, this soul? What is it that moves this person? What are the indivisible energies that move the visible world? And probably the single most important thing in, in understanding what deaf psychology is about is an effort to try to dialogue with that invisible world. And to do that, we have this construct of the unconscious. There are centers of energy, clusters of energy, that are very much part of who we are, that are operating, again, outside the ego control. Jung's concept of the shadow is the way in which we are summoned to accountability for the other. Uh, the, the other is that which I do not wish to be, or that which I do not wish to acknowledge as mine, or sometimes that which I feel asks too much of me. It's about the capacity of the ego to tolerate the other, which is also an aspect of ourselves. And the single biggest difficulty that we face as a culture today is our difficulty in tolerating the otherness of the other. It's Jung's view that more people suffer from a loss of meaning than from the ordinary neuroses. They will show up symptomatically, but their origin really is spiritual in some deep sense. Jung said a, a neurosis is suffering that has not yet found its meaning. I think the biggest shadow issue is the degree to which we're willing to open ourselves to, to mystery, to the unknown to that invisible that courses through the visible. <laughs>